So I would planned to talk about architecture, uh, generative AI, um, 3D modeling, digital twins, that kind of stuff, because I had a really interesting conversation of quite a few different ideas. But I'm going to pivot and change this back to iOS 18. I just watched a video from Front Page Tech. Apologies, I don't remember the presenter's name. John Prosser. I really hope, I think that is. And um, he makes quite a few interesting videos. And I decided to watch his video today on the iPhone 16. And he didn't have amazing things to talk about. First of all, he talked about the hardware and iPhone 16 and how we've come to a point where the phones are so close together that it's the first year he's going to pro. Um, but he also did say the reason he's doing that is because he's not using his device for his professional work. If you are use, using professional work like cameras, uh, audio, anything like that, you definitely want to work with a pro. But then the second half of the video, he brought back a clip of Steve Jobs talking about um, Apple, the Macintosh, the iPhone, and saying that the big secret about Apple is that it's not a hardware company, it's a software company. And it's interesting because my conversation about the generative AI today, we did touch upon that, how hardware can give you a big leg up. It's very, very difficult to do, but if you can make a crazy good hardware, it's much harder for other companies to come out against you because it's so much more money and so much more difficult to get to. But the secret behind that is you can't just release a new hardware product. You need the software inside of it. As we've seen with the Humane's, um, I'm not sure if they called it here. I'm not sure what they call the Humane, the Humane pin, I think it was called, and Rabbit R1, which were both very interesting in their own rights, but didn't have a good, um, they weren't implemented properly. They didn't have the features they needed to have. And ultimately what both of them were doing was basically trying to be parts of the smartphone without the smartphone. And the, po the problem of that is when you've got a lot of features that all you've done is you're taking the limitations away because you don't have the touchscreen and you don't have the operating system that over a decade has been perfected and improved upon. And you're trying to get very niche products into there and you're boxing people into how to control it, but it's much more difficult than a phone. You're not going to have an easy time. You have to create something that's fundamentally different and going in a different direction. And neither of the... I would say both of those devices had interesting use cases, but not robust enough that you would want to use them instead of your smartphone. And in the end of the day, all you're doing is you're carrying on a smartphone and these devices. And you've seen in operating system, in new updates this year from Apple, from Google, companies are basically just baking some of those features into their smartphones. And essentially they're replicating a lot of those results into their own hardware. So, what this brought me back into is that as I'm watching this, I'm finding myself agreeing with certain things. When I look in iOS 18, I have used this uh, operating system for a few months now. And it was very exciting in the beginning, but the fact that Apple intelligence is cut off for a vast majority of users, A, on the devices, but it's not really coming to the world for another couple of months is a huge problem. But B, when I also look into iOS 18, especially after doing the month of visualizing what AI could look like in an iPhone, the release was a little bit underwhelming. And what I did after WWDC is I looked at the things that Apple actually released and critiqued them and looked at which parts were actually similar to what I was talking about and where I saw the features going. But there's a huge part that I think is fundamental to changing how the operating system of the future could be on smartphones, right? We're not looking into augmented reality. We're not looking into different interfaces or different devices. But if we're looking at the smartphone, the smartphone has a potential to be an absolute game changer in the very fact that this is the device that is in your pockets, that is the most accessible, a lot more accessible than your laptop. Laptop, even now, like I recommend a lot of people to get to the iPad because it's just a lot, a lot more accessible. It's lighter. It could do a few more things. And besides the limitations of the operating system, which by the way is massive, there's a lot of people that can't go there yet. The application is not designed properly, but we, we kind of see this feature that's like nearly there and we're like, we can nearly touch it, but that's very frustrating because the iPad is not um, freed from its limitations. But the frustration for me 
especially when designing what AI could look like in the smartphone. If, if Apple does, if Apple goes crazy and builds the next paradigm of the smartphone operating system, and I'm gonna be very careful in the use of smartphone operating system because the augmented operating system, the layer operating system in the spatial world is a very different operating system. But the smartphone still has many years to it because of the power of AI and the power of automation, it can be incredibly, incredibly powerful. The problem is even in what Apple has released and what Apple has talked about, it's, for me, it has been frustrating to see because it's, it's so limited. <sighs> what they've done is they've done a lot of things where they've just taken what looked cool with like ChatGPT and MidJourney and kind of tried to bring like the baby strap down versions of that into the iPhone. It's not necessarily gonna make your life easier, like playground and making like these different designs. I mean, maybe people are gonna come up with great opportunities for it, but all I can think of is if I'm in a family group chat and I wanna send, today I would send like a sticker or a meme or something if I wanted to convey a certain point. So here with playground or image generation, you'll be able to do something a little bit more personalized or come up with it. But it's nothing cha world changing. It doesn't really help you get your work done. Automation has a huge potential for changing that and where Siri could fall into an iPhone, where Siri could help you automate certain tasks, create certain complex um, chains of events, where today it takes hours upon hours out of your time. If Siri could help you distill that into shortcuts, automations, intents, whatever we're going to call it, this to me starts looking like a game changer and all I'm seeing in what iPhone has released to, the, you know, the Apple intelligence of iOS 18, which we don't really have access to, is very limited. I mean, it's making Siri a little bit more helpful, but no, nowhere close to a personal assistant, nowhere close to helping to automate your, your projects, automating parts of your life, getting rid of huge bulk, empowering the individual to make tasks that before required companies or small teams. AI has the potential to get us there. Just, like, even if I'm gonna just focus on that small thing, AI has the potential to make us incredibly, incredibly powerful. It, it, it will empower the individual to be able to do things that until today required small teams, companies, or even like one of the things I was talking about the generative, um, the generative design was like killing off bureaucracy. And I think like AI has a huge, has a perfect opportunity to really kill off a huge amount of bureaucracy. And it's just so frustrating to look at like, or even imagine the possibilities, but not being able to get, see that on a, on a device that's like used. I don't know, I'm just, when I really look at what iOS 18 was promised with and what we have now, and the vision of it, it does not seem, like to me, it, it, it's not an exciting thing. When I watched the, the, the event, especially going for a month before it, I'm just thinking of like small little tweaks that would completely change the device. It was very, very underwhelming. And the product nowadays, like there's, there is a few things that I'm happy that it has, but as an operating system, as a massive year leap, as the fact, like after like two years of us getting LLMs, generative AI, and getting into really seeing how AI has been leveraged by certain companies, how powerful it is, and realizing that these agents, what they're able to help us do, what they can action for us, and realizing where that can live in the operating system and not relying on third parties and, and, and building on top of um, vastly different companies and applications. It's kind of frustrating to see that Apple has not dived into the real power of AI. And it seems to me that a lot of, like majority of the AI, the Apple intelligence is certain gimmicks that I think that yes, here and there it'll help you out, you know, if you can professionalize your email, but it's like you can fundamentally change how you control or you, or, or, or you even manage your email that like, I really think if we looked forward in a few years and, and, and kind of looked back at this time and saw, oh, the, the Apple intelligence for email was just to make it sound more professional, would be like, what were we thinking? Like that is such a one step, like we could have taken 10 steps. iOS 18 could have been Apple's pot, like potential to take 
10 steps and completely show everybody what AI could look like, how it could leapfrog the smartphone into a whole new world that is just disappointing and hasn't. Um, we're going to talk more about this. I'll see you guys in the future.